Jordan, the topic is spanking. The top pediatricians in the country announcing that we should never spank, saying that it impacts brain development. Yeah, we were really surprised to hear how some of the correlations popped up. So we brought in Dr. Elizabeth Mead, Hi. pediatrician with Swedish. Good to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So when I saw that it was correlated, there was a correlation with brain development, I was really surprised to hear that. What was your take on that? You know, I think correlation is the important word. So mm. we can't say from this data that there's causation, but we know these things are linked. And I think that's enough even for pediatricians to say, you know, we've never recommended spanking, certainly, but now we have so much more data to sort of show what the negative consequences okay, are. Okay, what do you mean by linked? Explain yeah. the difference between cause versus link. So the last time that we updated our sort of guidance around discipline was 1998. So it's wow. been a long time, right? And so over the last 20 years, there's been a lot more good data and evidence around some of those negative consequences of spanking. So when we look at studies, we find that kids who have been spanked tend to be more aggressive. And sometimes we worry about their sort of that physical punishment, aggression, physical punishment cycle that kids get into with their parents. And then there's also studies showing that actually kids who have had pretty significant or prolonged um, physical punishment have actual changes in their MRI of their brain and lower IQ in some areas. And so it's just a lot of cause for concern and I think brings up a great discussion point to talk with parents about how they discipline their kids. Well, speaking of discussion point, we put it in our hive and asked some of our yeah, viewers for their great. questions. They asked some really thoughtful questions, so we thought we would pose a couple Perfect. to you if you're okay with that. Yeah. Um, Lindsay wants to know, how do you discipline an overactive two-year-old with autism when nothing seems to be working? Yeah, so so autism can be extremely challenging and I think any parent who has any kid with special needs but certainly with autism knows that behavior can really be an issue. So timeouts can work for certain kids, even kids with autism. I think the most important thing with any child is to ignore the bad behavior and really praise the good behavior. So we want to focus on a lot of positive discipline. Sometimes if any child, but especially a child with autism or other behavioral challenges is having a tantrum, you just sort of have to let them flail it out, right? And just ignore them until it's over and then really focus on giving lots of praise and positive reinforcement when they're doing the behaviors that you want to see. It seems so counterintuitive the first time I ever heard someone say that I'm supposed to respond to my child positively when they do something <laughs> negative. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, well, if you want to see more of something, they were saying, well, how do you respond? Yeah. Like when someone says, oh, you're, but you know, it's well, negative versus. Kids crave attention from their parents. And so if we're giving them attention for doing the behaviors we want them to be doing and ignoring the bad behavior, they're going to focus on doing those those good things that we want to see more and more. And I think it's also really important mm -hmm. for us to model the behavior that we want to see in our kids. And so if you don't want your child doing something like yelling or hitting, you don't do that to them, right? So would a timeout work? We had that question from yeah. the Hive. Shannon posted, well, timeouts, okay. timeouts work yep. with children today. Timeouts are absolutely okay. They're one of the methods of discipline that pediatricians still really recommend. A good rule of thumb for those is kind of one minute per year of age that the child is. That's about all they can I only get one do. minute. <laughs> Come on, they can't focus really for longer than that. But actually, three-year-olds and over can sort of self-regulate. So once kids get a bit older, almost to school age, you can start saying, you know, go to your corner, wherever your timeout is, and then you come back when you're ready to be calm and sort of talk. Yeah. Okay, so are there ways, because some people have joked about timeouts and whether they're effective, but yeah. I have to imagine since you're recommending it, they are, are there some things we're maybe not doing right with the timeouts? Well, I think the timeout, the reason that we like it so much in pediatrics is because not only is it, it is a little bit of a negative consequence, again, it's kind of ignoring that bad behavior, okay. but it also lets everyone cool down for a few minutes, parents included. So what we find when we look at these studies is that oftentimes parents are really saying, you know, I only spank as a last resort, mm -hmm. but the time from going from verbal discipline to spanking is about 30 seconds. So it feels like a last resort, but it's so emotional when your mm -hmm. kid is misbehaving, right? And you just want them to do the, the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think the timeout is great because it lets everybody cool off and kind of take a deep breath and come back with a, a new sense of calm and control. Well, well, we've been getting texts from some of you about this, and we want you to definitely bring your questions. Um, here we go. I was spanked as a child, and I told myself I would not spank my kids. Instead, we take Fortnite away. They yeah. think it's the worst punishment ever. My kids are 16 and 13. <laughs> oh, look at this. Burpees. Someone from CrossFit, apparently. <laughs> Burpees <laughs> is my kid's punishment. Tires them out, teaches them a lesson of what happens when you make bad choices, and it resets their brain. That's interesting. You know, sometimes just distraction and or physical activity can, can reset all of us a little bit, so I don't think that's a bad idea. Taking the bedroom door off can be very effective, depending on the age. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no privacy you want you. to see it. Well, you can see the variety of sort of consequences that parents yeah. come up with, right? And I think it depends on what's going to matter most to your child and what's going to sort of inspire them to do the right thing next time. Yeah. I know there are so many countries that have actually banned spanking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there I are. I mean, dozens of countries that have banned spanking, and you guys have been saying for some time, like, we don't like this. Right, and so that's it's, we've never recommended it, but I think it, we can, so with so much more conviction now, say, look, we have evidence and data and really good literature to back this up. Okay. It sounds like if we can see it as a, a miscommunication 
a child communicates differently from an adult, Absolutely. and that's where we're kind of, you know, the child is communicating with emotion, and yeah. we're communicating with reason. We, like, why we don't like you want to think just we are, right? Calm but down. we might not always you know, may not be. Yeah. And things can escalate really quickly, and so sure. that's why I think just taking a breather and kind of a cool off time period can sometimes be good for the whole family. All right, we have another text to show. Okay. I think Great. it might be a question. Oh, I'm sorry. They say we don't have a text. We're out of time. Um, so, okay. Dr. Mead, thank you so much for <laughs> weighing in on thank this. You. I'm sure this won't be the last time we discuss this topic. No, I think discipline and behavior is always a hot topic for parents. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Appreciate you dropping by. Take five. Thank you.